taking on Andrew Sams, the three seed out of Indianapolis, comes in with a mark of 31 and four, and both of these guys had overtime wins to get here. Turuf had to go to sudden victory, nine to seven to knock off Eldridge, the one seed, and then it was Sams, he was on our semifinal mat, had to go to a second overtime to get the win as he knocked off unseeded Alex Kaufman of Central Oklahoma. Yeah, Sam's a redshirt junior, Turuf a senior. Sam's an All-American a season ago. Turuf a runner-up as well. Oh, a couple, a couple All-Americans for each one of these guys. Turuf trots across. He's got the all-black singlets with the yellow trim. Meanwhile, Sam's the maroon and gray combination singlet. His mascot, the Greyhounds, across the chest. Turf, a great example, Todd, of sticking with the sport. You think about instant glory. You got seven-year-olds wrestling in national championships and traveling the country. Turf, a one-time state qualifier my home state of wisconsin never meddled in the state tournament stuck with it gets to college some people mature some people find their groove at different ages he clearly found it. i'm glad he kept wrestling maybe you say college wrestling isn't for me after that high school career but i think he made the right call national runner-up a season ago back in the finals here Sams, he got here as a three seed, bottom half of the bracket, 9-3 win in the first round, a quick pin, 42 seconds of Caleb Spears of Newberry. Like we said, that overtime win over Kaufman in the semifinals. Meanwhile, Eldridge was the one seed until he ran into Trevor Turov and got the victory in the semifinal. But before he got there, Turov, he knocked off Biddle of Pitt. Johnstown, 11-3 in the 7-2 victory over McGeary of West Liberty, the five seed in the quarterfinals. And those paths to get here to the Rays mat. Yeah, both these guys had to put in some extra work to get here, both winning overtime matches in the semifinals. And you look at Sam's path, Todd, there were six unseeded wrestlers in this morning's semifinal round. None made it to the finals. Sam's was kind of the last one to to take out one of the bracket busters in a 9-7 dramatic fashion in OT. Both wrestlers sizing each other up here at center mat. Last year, Turuf was the runner up at 174 pounds. With an 11-1 record, he went into that national championship unblemished. Came oh so close to getting that. By the way, these two teams, six and seven right now in the team standing. Indianapolis at 48 and a half points. Minnesota State at 31. Of course, we have another finalist at heavyweight coming up for Minnesota State. Could they make a late charge again? Kearney, Central Oklahoma, West Liberty, St. Cloud. Right now, your top four. Sam's one year ago here in St. Louis, fifth place at 174, came in ranked number five last year. And then this year, Turf, number nine in the country, and Sam's checks in again as number five in the country. Trying to do a pass by there as Turf, nothing doing, and we've got 40 seconds left in the first period. Coming to you from Shavitz Arena in downtown St. Louis, I'm Todd Schumacher along with Joe Miller giving you the commentary. We've had some dandies. Three Adam State Grizzlies have won national championships, and we've only seen one overtime so far. And only one, one versus two. These have been kind of wide open brackets. Here's another one where the seeds, the top seeds, do not find their way to, to championship Saturday. It just goes to show you can have a great... November, December, January, February, Todd. But you know when it matters? March. This here's a nice shot attempt by Sams. Nice inside single. Kept digging. And time expires in the first. But good message to send there. Late in the first. Solid shot. And Joyce is going to go to Turf. Looks at his corner. He's going to defer. So Sams will choose down to begin this second frame. 
Yeah, I like what you said there. I like what Sam's did late in the period. Probably knew he wasn't going to score, but sends a little message. Say, hey, I'm here to wrestle. You're, you're going to have to wrestle all seven minutes if you're going to beat me. And kind of putting that, that, that first statement out there by saying, hey, let's, let's, let's mix it up here. I like it. Sam's last loss as he comes in with a great record of 28-4 and four was against Josh Jones in the duel against McKendry. That was at McKendry January 26th. Since then, he has been nothing but wins in the bank here to get here to the national championship match. And Turoff cuts him and then tackles him. Does not get the one. They wanted the class pans, and here comes the challenge brick. Out of the indie corner, and they will stop. I think they're going to say locked hands. I don't. Yeah. I, I think they're going to wish they had that one back. I didn't think. I think the Indianapolis coaches, Todd, didn't think that their guy was going to get away like he did. I think it was probably more at, originally when they challenged it. It was more about the escape. Yeah. And then I think they they realized Sam's was going to get the escape, so they kind of changed their tune into a locked hands. Again, I don't think there's going to be much there. I think that's just kind of a spur of the moment. I get the call in, in real time. Because it did look like he had to escape, but you know what? He got the escape anyway, so it, it's kind of much ado about nothing. But who knows? There may be a locked hands in there, and Indianapolis is going to steal a point here. And I don't think he did. I think he he overlapped his arms around the bottom of the legs yeah. of Sam's, like you said. Yeah. I don't want to play you know psychologist Dr. Joe or Dr. Phil here on our broadcast, but if I'm holding my feet to the fire, I'm thinking the challenge came because they thought it was an escape. Which it very well could have been, but then he gets the escape anyway. Well, you've already thrown the brick. I got to challenge something. The escape's off the table, so what's left? Let's go locked hands. <laughs> and the call is confirmed. No locked hands. So there goes that challenge for you, Indy. And Again, like I say, think it's... Probably changed their tone, and yeah. now... We'll see if that becomes a factor. Sam's awarded the escape on their feet halfway through the first, uh, actually 30 seconds into the second period. Yeah, you absolutely could have made the, the challenge that it was an escape originally. But again, I don't think the Indianapolis coaches thought Sam's was going to hop right back up and get the escape. And it's kind of like, well, we've already made the challenge. What's left? Well, the only option was locked hands. I think we all pretty much agreed. And so did the officials that there, there was no locked hands. So unfortunately for Indianapolis, they're going to lose their challenge. And still got a lot of wrestling to go here. Great shot by Turf. He's deep in there, trying to walk through the crotch of Sams, but putting that pressure on. He's got his hips high as Turf, and he collects the two. Stuck with it. Great patience there. You, you always talk about time and score. Where are you? You don't have to force it. I see so many times wrestlers at all levels, when they get in the shot, they think they have to force it. That's where you make mistakes. Great job by Turf. You knew he had plenty of time. Let me just settle in, try and get my takedown, and he did just that. An escape by Sams, and we're tied up at two. Riding time, not a factor. 44 seconds accumulated by Tariff. Now we saw Sams take a, a pretty spirited attempt at a takedown late in the first period. Does he push the gas pedal here in the final 15 of period two? The Greyhounds out of the GLVC conference. And they were in the Super Region 4. And while Man uh, Minnesota State came out of that Super Region 5. Now to start the third, Turf chooses bottom. Gets set. Builds to a quad pod. Hip heist and big Maverick. Oh, big Maverick turn. That could be backies. And yeah. a challenge brick coming in. Well, they've I already given their challenge. They've they can't challenge it challenge. again. Yeah. yeah. You only get one of those. Uh, and now that one, they may have had some skin in the game, but yeah, you only get one, guys. As he took them straight into near fall criteria. Now, I don't know. I thought the, the challenge, they lost the challenge. Yeah. So there's three. It's okay. Well, this one, they might have a case. It was close to two near fall there. We'll see. Again, not the official's fall. It was out of, out of position. It was a very quick. But, look, all you need, Todd, is a two count here. We're going to see the replay. You need two swipes.
Officials gather around the video review monitor. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they uh, had to hit fast forward on the tape there. It was it, coming off a mat return. Now here, let's see it on iron. One, two. I think you. I think you might have two near fall there. I think that might be a good challenge. That's close. The thing that's nice about that mat return, especially for the the young wrestlers watching, is you always say on a takedown, look for the half, try to get him on his back. And in this case, that's what Sam's did. Yeah. Great lift, and he wasn't just happy with getting that mat return and taking a little gas out of the tank. He was looking for near fall right away. Well, here we see it again. The officials right Another next angle to us. There. I'm going to say one, two. I'm going to say that's a two count. Yeah. It's close. It's it's. I'll tell you this. It's no more than two. Now the question is, was it one or two? There's for sure at least a second of exposure. Obviously, you need two. I'm I'm glad I don't have to make that decision, and they do. I can I can see two, and I can see not. Sometimes you say the decision. call on the man. It's got to be indisputable, irrefutable evidence. Was that obvious? Yeah. No, I just don't know if there's enough to overturn it. It's, it's well, tough. Well, the angle it's, was behind if you had from the, the head, but they were behind on that angle, and, of course, that's just the angle it goes with, and that's what they can determine. Again, don't have a problem not calling it. Wouldn't have a problem if they did call it. Probably best that they don't. It's a 2-2 match. Let's let them wrestle. And the escape by Turf. But Sams was looking for that claw and, and, and try to dump him back down to the mat, as he did in that first sequence. Now they're on their feet early I, on in the third. I will say this, Andrew Sam's win or lose, you are now in the Matt Return Hall of Fame. That was uh, one <laughs> heck of a Matt Return. <laughs> Put that one in the archives. Shallow shot by Turoff. Riding time off the board, Todd, for both these guys. So you look at this score, 3-2. It, it literally is a takedown to win it here for a national champion at 174 pounds. Good setup by Turoff. They go potentially dangerous. Yeah, I think he cuffed him on the back of the head, a little, little hard on that collar elbow tie. These guys are tough. They'll be fine with that. Nice reshot here by Sam. He's deep, head inside, but good job by Turf. Gets those hips down, laces flat. And a stalemate, boy, a quick stalemate there. But we're back to the middle, 38 on the clock. Well, you definitely see the urgency now picking up in Sam's. The question is, Todd, if he can't get the takedown, can he elicit two stalling calls here in 30 seconds? I think that's the, the rub right now if you're Andrew Sam's. If I'm Turf, I'm just finding a way to get in a leg, hang on, and you're probably winning a national title. Now 20 left, shot in by Turov. He's lifted the leg. Ooh. And that might be good enough as he chews a lot of clock away. Yeah, you can now, what, what he did there, Todd, is absolutely, and I'm not tying up. I'll take the stalling call all day if I'm Turov. You did your job, you ate 20 seconds of clock. You're going to win a national title, even though you didn't get the takedown. You're right, called the clock up, and, and it, it, it was enough. And it is Trevor Turov. It's the national championship at 174 pounds. Gutsy performance. Again, not, uh, not highly seated, not highly ranked all season. That's why I love March Madness. It's not just a clever name. Somebody long before us came up with the nickname Madness, and Trevor Turoff, a great example of that. Never even placed in his high school state tournament. He's a national champ. Talk about sticking with something and, and grinding. That's what Trevor Turov's done here tonight. Get some love from his coaching staff. He'll head down to our broadcast position. And we'll get to talk to him. And we're talking to the 174 pound national champion, Trevor Tura from Minnesota State. Trevor, you were here a year ago in the national championship match, and now you come back and you get the gold medal. Walk us through towards the end of the match, very close, you're up by one. What was your mindset there? 
be offensive. I got great teammates that push me like that every day. Shout out to Zach, he's been pushing me for the past four years. Shout out to my coaches and families. I got such a great support system, and it led me to moments like these. So I just want to say thank you. All credit to them. Hey, Trevor, you were never even a place winner in your high school tournament, yet you're a national champion. Talk about the grind when you made the move to college to get to this point. Yeah, my coach always said to me, you get four opportunities if you're lucky. Got DQ'd senior year at State, got injured. COVID happened last year I got here. I didn't take advantage of the opportunity. This year I finally did. Well, congratulations, Trevor. Inspirational story that you can get to the national championship no matter where you came from. That's your man, 174 pound national champion. I miss you, baby. We're bringing it home. <laughs> Let's go, Debo. I mean, you talk about a story of perseverance. Never even placed in his high school state tournament. He only qualified once, for goodness sakes. And six years later, six years later, he's a national champion. That is, if that doesn't motivate you to get off your couch and do something great tomorrow, I don't know what will. <laughs> Chandler, Oklahoma, they're going to be talking about the night. Heath Gray won a national title and gave Central Oklahoma a team trophy. Great stuff. So now they'll announce the national champions, 174 pounds. In fifth place from Mercyhurst, All-American Dylan Walker. In fourth place from Nebraska Kearney, All-American Austin Eldridge. In third place from West Liberty, All-American Ty McGeary. Your 174 pound national runner up, representing you in the All American Andrew Sams. And presenting the 174 pound championship trophy, the head coach of the Mavericks of Minnesota State University, Jim Makovsky, your 174 pound national champion from Minnesota State, Trevor Turf. Up next, 